153rd and Morris Avenue right now. We're expecting the first time in the Bronx a Pride Parade walk. Um, and they're walking to 149, coming back around, and they're going to have a festival right here in the Bronx. And as you can see behind me, they are starting right now, coming my direction here today. And this is amazing that the LDM show is the first person to ever record this right now, right now here live. So it's a great, a great aspect. We got great friends over here recording as well. But again, I meet them again the first time during the Pride. Check it out. Again, the first time they're doing the Pride walk here today. And it's an amazing event here. An amazing way. Bronx night in the Bronx after 15 years. After 15 years. Yeah, and I, I'm amazed because I had to catch on 161st. Come on here and catch you again. But you guys are working for the first time here in the Bronx for many, many years. I love that news. It feels amazing, amazing. I had my group on me because we was at another parade yesterday and last week and so on and so forth. So I had to make it happen. There we go. So me check that one. All right. Hey. LDL show is the first one to ever record what's going on right here today. And as you can see, we're going to be going back again to the festival, and we're going to catch a little bit out there. This is the LDL show. Peace. See you next time. probably grab a couple people to talk uh, talk to that are coming around. How we doing, guys? Good, good. good. Y'all just get to walk, right? How, how it feels to walk after after 15 years of the Bronx not understanding that we are here? Yeah. You know, that's the whole message. We are here. How does it feel to take that walk for the first time in 15 years? Uh, I mean, I think it was amazing. Uh, it was so much fun. But yeah. you want to no, no, we're up here, we're out here, you know, taking up space, giving visibility to our community, because we are here, we always have been here, and um, that's what it's about, having time in life. And that's good, you know, they have all the stuff, Bronx, New York, 14 resistance. Uh, let's make history and elect the first Latin to represent us in Congress. You won me with Latin. Um, basically, we need both. We need Latin, we need females, we need uh, diversity, basically. Yeah, I'm, too, so. <laughs> I'm all for it, you know. Uh, LDN's been covering the Pride Parade for four years, um, and they always say, why is the straight guy covering? Because I have family myself that are, are, are gay and stuff like that, and my best friends and friends are, uh, you know, so I don't really care. I need more of this in Congress, and you're right, we need everything. 
So if you are going to vote, vote for someone that stands for more than just themselves. The election is June 26th. We all got to turn around. We're going to be represented. we got to be at the ballot. So June 26th, 10 days, 9 days, 9 days. Yeah, and not only that, just register to vote as much as possible, especially the Latin people. They're just like sitting down watching novelas. You got to come out and, you know, and vote. But guys, thank you uh, for doing the walk and appreciate you taking your time. Um, again, this is the LDM show, and we're going to be here all day pretty much watching and celebrating with them. You know, half of the time, you got to come down and be here with us as well. And don't forget the Manhattan Pride Parade will be there as well, so you got to be down there too. So if you have someone that you want to be happy, support them as much as possible because you never know where they can be. They can be our next congressman, our next president. You never know. I'll see y'all soon, right? But again, look around, look around. We got, we got another hey, Susan behind me right now, hiding in the background. We just heard her talking. So we have a lot of people, the Bronx ambassadors here again. You know what? This lady, I got, she don't know, I got the GPS on. She was walking on 161st, and that was the only news station right there waiting for you. I can see that. You all have GPS on me. I was checking it, and like everywhere I am, I said, there. That's a good thing. You're covering the community, you know? Uh, we, we are a community talk show, and we are award-winning talk show. Matter of fact, she gave us awards, you know, and the senators gave us awards. And this is the reason why I make sure I'm in the heart of what's going on. And I have to spread the news. That's Father's Day, and I'm here. So, yeah, and people, happy and you know what, sir? Where's some, your baby boy? Somewhere around there shopping. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but they was like, why are you covering something on Father's Day? Go out. Um, because it's what I prefer to do on Father's Day. This is what makes me happy. Being going out, you know, this is my passion. And being a historical person here to be in here it's for the history. first time. This is, this is Father's Day. You just captured his city in Father's Day. But basically, you captured his city. And then we're going to capture some more uh, on the stage, some performance. I'm used to that, bro. Okay. All right. All right. I'm in the house. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be on the stage. There's going to be dancing in the streets. But we're going to talk to more people and try to get find out how it felt. This is history. 15 years in the making. And finally, the Bronx said, hey, I'm here. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is Charles Aloma. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Charles Aloma, and I want to thank you for watching the LDM Network. For more information on this show or any other show, please go to www.ldmnetwork.net. Again, that's www.ldmnetwork.net. And now, let's get back to our show. Hello, and welcome back to the LDM show. And again, I tell you, we're going to be bringing you great interviews because this is 15 years in the making, and we'll have hit history. The LDM has done so many things, and I'm glad to say that we are in a history moment, especially we have many people here today, and a great friend of ours that's doing a lot of things for the LG on PC, and for, um, matter of fact, not even just for them, for the whole community in the Bronx. So let's just smack that off, what I just said, and just say she's doing great things for the Bronx and the whole uh, New York City. And so how does it feel, 15 years in the making? I can't just find them, like, how long it took for this to happen here today? It was well overdue. I mean, we've been planning for more than 20 years. Right. And raising of the flag, it became a momentous occasion. Because now we have the LGBT flag on the Supreme Court Fox, mm -hmm. um, which is on Thursday, Friday. Today, we're doing our second annual one Bronx trip off. Mm -hmm. We had our first parade this morning. Yep. And now we're doing the festival. We're having a lot of great artists performing. I'm overwhelmed. This is why we're doing this for the future generation, which the person that's holding this camera is a youth. <laughs> and we're doing it for them. Mm -hmm. We're setting the foundation for our future. Because if we don't do this, we're strong. We're, we're not one. We're many. Mm -hmm. We're all diverse. And Michael Brady and, 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 and our committee had a vision to do this in one young festival pride. Right. And we're going to continue doing it. Yeah, and, and it's great. Like, and I'm happy for two reasons. One, that this is going on because I have a lot of friends out in the community. 
and two, because this is the right here, you know? I'm going to live right there on 152nd at Morris Avenue, and we're just a block away from her. And that day, I just seen that we're, uh, well, not walking, but we're not home attending. She's not all happy that they're doing a the festival, so you guys are bringing smiles more than you even know. Radio station in the world. In the world. Is right here. Right now. LLDM Radio. Remember how she turned to me and say, Hey kid, what good is sitting all alone in your room? Come, hear the music. are going to be here to host the second half of the show. Yay! Yeah! 
It's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, I have to tell you here. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, and you can see them on the stage, hosting, and even casting, performing, and everything, but that's what it's all about today, is the energy that you guys are giving out. And real quick, let them know who you are, what you do, and the way
That's why I like I like clash in a struggle for total domination the scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world put a lot of smoke in today. Wow. But anyway, we expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LDM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to light. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here.
going? Oh, no. Nah, come on. I don't hear you. How y'all doing, Bronx? Oh. What's good, y'all? Um, it's a beautiful day to be gay. Right? It's a beautiful day to be a lesbian. It's a beautiful day to be transgender. And it's a beautiful day to be straight, because who are we without our heterosexual allies? Right? So give y'all a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. So my name is Rob Vassilarakis. Most people know me as Simply Rob. Um, I'm half El Salvadoran, half Greek, born in New York City. So that makes me Puerto Rican, I think. Right? Um, and I've been charged with being a poet, so I'm going to try and kick some poetry for you guys. I hope you like it. Uh, my first one is an ode to the South Bronx. And it says, The South Bronx is getting a facelift. Same face, only tighter. Garrison Avenue is still the point. Still gritty. Still bad. This thunder cannot be stolen. Centro de Cultura. Look around, it's everywhere. Take a deep breath, it's in the air. The pain turned into art. Transformation and change. Wastelands in our parks. A woman pulls a child in a supermarket cart. Gentrification rolls in, but we still have heart and soul. Impossible to suppress. Taste the cross-pollination. Arroz y habichuela con southern fried chicken. Mambo, doo-wop, down low, hip-hop. Salsa rhythms on black. Tops, dancing on fire escapes and rooftops. Tour buses are flooring up in these parts. We up in here, they stop and stare, and we out like that, out like that. Oh. It's hot up in this motherfucker. Yeah, baby, wave your rainbow flags. Let me see those rainbow flags. You know, it's a, it really is a beautiful thing to be here in the South Bronx to declare that I am a gay man because I'm sure that not long ago, if I stood here right on this very corner saying that I'm a gay man, I probably could have gotten shot or killed or beaten, right? But we're here, we're proud, we're not going anywhere, right? We're going to keep coming. <laughs> All right. Check, check. All right, there we go. There we go. Um, I'm going to do a signature piece. Um, this is one of the first pieces that I wrote, and it reflects a lot of um, the people that that I've worked with, young people who don't have the luxury of... Um, I'm just going to let the, the piece speak for itself. It's called Seeker. I knew this cat named Seeker who was in search of something deeper. He handled his, he wasn't a sleeper. I've met mad heads in my lifetime, and Seeker was a keeper. I had his back, he had mine. We were always side by side, and I remember when I knew him, he was living two lives. In one, he was a rainbow that stretched across the sky, made up of sunlight through the raindrops shining the colors of his pride. In the other, he had to hide, keeping the truth inside. While longing for the day, he didn't have to live a lie. We were 18, he was the eldest of five, and being the man of the house meant that his youth and education fell by the wayside compromise, but Seeker was street and otherwise wise. You see, he taught himself to read by sounding out the street signs the way he read street signs to himself and his mind. And his motto was, only the strong survive, only the strong survive. Sometimes he'd say it as he'd mush me, and then he'd look at me and smile. He said it on that one day, that one day was a Sunday, that Sunday was Gay Pride Day, Gay Pride Day, and the Sunday, having fun day, getting some day, it was, you don't have to hide day, take your shirt off, wave your, take your shirt off, wave your rainbow colored flag day, not five kids, one crib day, but scan for ass at the parade day, making out with other dudes day, the cameras panning through the crowd day, the Sunday evening news play. His mother saw him on TV and now she knew that he was gay. I couldn't offer him a place to stay. When he got home, he was disowned. The man of the house was now dethroned. The last thing he ever heard his mother say was, No quiero hijo maricón! 
I knew this cat named Seeker who was in search of something deeper, but what he found was something like a phenomenon. Something like a phenomenon. I'm talking about kids selling their bodies on the streets they live on. The other things he found were his stomach empty and a park bench to sleep on, giving the popo someone to peep on, creep toward him, then leap on in order to wake him up with the jolts of a nightstick. Sometimes he might hook up with a trick, who'd pay him a few dollars to lick his balls and suck his dick. One night he scored an overnighter with a stranger, and the thought of a warm shower and a soft bed to sleep on made him blind to the signs of impending danger, so he agreed willingly for a hundred dollar fee. His body was discovered the next morning. Beneath ominous storm clouds that were forming, I, when I got the call from the detective, it was already storming. They asked me if I knew him, and I wasn't sure just what to say, because they called him by his government, and I never heard him referred to that way. I said and I couldn't help him. I didn't know that name, but he gave me a number to call anyway, and as soon as I hung up, I threw that shit away and started to get ready, because I had plans with my man Seeker later that same day. When I left the crib, I saw a rainbow in the sky. So I fell to my knees on the wet sidewalk and started to cry because I knew that very instant it was Seeker saying goodbye. Only the strong survive, only the strong survive. But one of them had died. I guess he no longer seeks today. He doesn't have to live a lie, a lie. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's my time. My name is Simply Rob. Have a beautiful, beautiful pride. Be safe. Love yourselves. If no one told you yet today, let me be the first to say I love you. Me corazón.
ready and go, and we're here in the Bronx Pride Festival, and it's one Bronx Festival here today. And you can see her performing and having fun, and we're going to have two interviews, so we are English people, we're first, and then we do a Spanish one. So just enjoy us and have a little fun here. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great. My name is Apollonia Cruz, and I'm the creator, founder, director, and co-host of the original Bronx Pride Festival that's happening. cambiaron para julio y después nos fuimos más en junio. Ahí continuamos en dos diferentes parques y cuando esta agencia se, se fue bancarrota, yo como era la cojos, dije, no voy a dejar que esto se muera y desde 2012 lo tengo vivo en julio. Hasta ahora, va a ser sábado, julio 14 de, de, de las 11, 7 y media de la tarde. En Catana Park. Wow. Y tú, como digo, yo no sé cómo tú haces todo eso. Y you no, know, tiene el, el bote, tiene el, el festival, tiene el corona. Y por eso decir algo, y lo hago sin, sin la ayuda de los políticos, de los, de los que los políticos no me ayudan ni un centavo. Esto yo lo hago con la ayuda de la gente, de la gente que estuve caminando en la calle y de algunas cooperaciones 
que me contratan como animadora, por la que los políticos no me han apoyado. Solamente cuando tienen las votos yeah. para las elecciones, ellos mm. vienen donde la Polonia, eh, pero después cuando están electados se pierden. Pero mira, mm. yo, yo, no, yo no estoy bravo por eso ni nada. Yo hago lo que tengo que hacer, yo sí estoy representando el Bronx. Mm -hmm. No, y ahora tú tienes familia con el ODM, porque el ODM yo siempre quiero aquel Bronx más grande. Con toda la gente que necesita ayuda, yo lo tiro en la televisión, lo tiro en el radio y todo para decir, mira, nosotros estamos aquí y nosotros vamos a hacer mucho. Y déjame decir otra cosa, tengo otro festival que se llama A Polonia Cruz, 5 años al Navidad en Julio, estaba en el 2021 en Barreto Point Park. De, de 12 a 7 es un es como si fuera un buen cual pero navideño y yo le doy a un juguete a los niños y todo es navideño completo tengo gente de, de Florida de todos los estados uh, no visto en los Estados Unidos que van a hacer todo para la comunidad navideño todo ah, tú sabes que si la audiencia puede nosotros vamos a estar ahí porque nosotros somos siempre todo el mundo y, y siempre eh, para la, el amor que está haciendo en el programa no importa quién le da otro evento más ella, mamá, mamá, a decir, todos los meses, porque ella tiene mucho. Sabes, no sé qué te pasa, es que está en el Bronx Festival Internacional, en Patrona Park. Domingo, el año 15, el cumpleaños, yo soy Javier, pero en la cruz tengo un crucero, saliendo de mi ropa de Sidney, y como le dije, el tiempo de mi año, me voy a ir a un lugar, en Patrona Park, en este de Bronx Festival. Dame todo ese punto de promoción para tirar los negocios al bar, toda la gente sabe qué está pasando. Porque yo le digo de verdad, nosotros ganamos mucho um, premio como el World y todo eso, pero no nada más porque yo estoy sentado, mira, yo estoy jugando aquí con ellos, bailando y todo, porque tú me tenías bailando y todo. Yo no quiero ni siquiera eso, aunque los políticos no me están soportando, ellos sí me han dado premio. Hello, my name is Araya. And I am Selena. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. And when I grow up, I want to be a nurse. Did you know that individuals who drive while sending or reading text messages are 23% more likely to be involved in a car crash more than other drivers? Also, a car crash is typical, happens within the average of three seconds after a driver is distracted. The United States Department of Transportation notes that cell phones are involved in 1.6 million auto crashes in a year. That causes half of a million injuries and takes 6,000 lives. On February 19, 2011, Ashley Jones Davis was killed in a horrific car accident. She was texting and driving when she left the center lane and drove head into a box truck. But she stopped short, writing her final message, I can't discuss this right now. Facebooking and driving is not safe. Because of this, a new law was made. We have families that will miss us. We also have futures. There is no text that cannot wait until later. So let's take this pledge and say no to texting and driving. Together we can spread the word and, and save a life, life. Don't, don't text, text and drive. drive. She's the winner of Brooklyn's Dragnet, and you can catch her on Mark Jacobs' Pride Campaign. Please put your hands together for the fabulous Serena T.
strike a pose. visibility as possible. Be as clear as we can. The higher the heels, the closer the God, the bigger the hoops, the bigger the hoe. Let's just go off. Like, thank you guys so much. Cheers. Thank you, my love. Welcome back to the LDM Show, and again, we're here in the Bronx having fun for the first time in 15 years at the Pride uh, at Gathered Together with the Bronx Festival. Um, it took too long. Uh, to me, it took too long, but now I'm here. You can see, it was like, damn, bro, on the floor. I can't, I can't, if I go on the floor, I won't go, I won't get back up here. I'll be like, oh, help. 
Right? Yeah. right? But you did real good, and, and everybody, you have everybody of news and entertainment. But how does it feel mostly to be here? And that, I said, 15 years before the Bronx said, let me combine them again. Um, so how does that feel to you? So I'm, I'm based in Brooklyn. I live in the Bronx. Born and raised in the Bronx. Um, but I'm Brooklyn too, and I'm performing Brooklyn. And this is my first time ever performing in the Bronx. Oh, wow. Um, I live here, but this is not necessarily a community I feel very safe in coming out and grabbing it. Right, right, right. Where I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, coming here, I was so scared, super nervous. But, like, the second I got on that stage, I just. Oh, I'm just like overwhelmed with love. I was like really paralyzed. I was like, oh, like, go, okay, like, you gotta move, you gotta dance, do something, like, let's do it. Um, yeah. It's like, I, it's really, it's really a privilege to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and like, for the people that have paved the way for me, the whole space in this community, um, thank you. But, um, yeah, I'm just overwhelmed. But so how long have you been doing this? I've been doing drag for seven months. For seven months? Seven months, yeah. Wow, and you're doing all that? <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's amazing how it's up going. But uh, how long have you known that you want to be doing drag queen and stuff like that? Um, honestly, when once you drive to the <laughs> so again, uh, we're here, like I said, first time 15 years when they combine together, uh, you just do the same. Uh, everybody was like, whoa! I, I see these straight guys like, oh yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, because they were feeling it. Yeah, they were feeling the dance, the moves, and everything. So I was like, uh oh. And then I said, like, when you did, and then you did the duck walk, uh, <laughs> that took everybody away, you know? And that's what the amazing part about being a drag queen is that you can entertain every single genre no matter who it is. And you just did that. Uh, you know, I'm just saying it from the bottom of my heart, you just did that. You know, you entertain every person, straight, gay, lesbian, everybody, you did it. Um, and this could continue. Yeah. And um, the one thing you struck me when you said you were uh, worried about coming to the Bronx dressed like that, this is one thing that I always say about my Bronx people. We need to embrace what's going on. Because you can't fight something that's going to overtake anyone. So join the party, embrace, no matter who you are, straight or not, you have to embrace it because there's things that straight people do that I don't like. You know what I'm saying? So, right? I mean, like, my go to thing is, you know, like, I, I try to be my most authentic self. Even when I'm uncomfortable, even when I'm on the show, I'm not even out of drive. Yeah, I have yeah. my heels on, I have my heels on, I'm going to be like a tiny t-shirt. And people just look at me like, if I've been on the job, I'm not afraid. It's insane. Like, if I've been on the job, I'm not afraid. And, like, you know, like, it's like, I'm driving into something that people feel need to be stopped. I'm like, I'm going to be a little double. But that's what I'm going to do, but, you know, if you don't feel like you're going to be a little double. Right back. 